Last year, I bought this total gem, a 1993 40th anniversary ruby red Chevy Corvette, and it only cost me $3,300. Now, the Corvette didn't always look this good. Well, actually, it did. Before going through multiple wholesale auctions with no takers and being dumped at a salvage auction, it looked like this and was loved by a Chicago man named Marlon. Marlon owned the car for about 20 years, nicknamed it Ruby, and treated it right, but eventually the repairs started piling up, so he traded it in at CarMax, and I found the car at Copart many years after he traded it in, in the middle of thousands of destroyed accident cars. It was listed as having mechanical damage, but retained a clean title, and from the pictures, you couldn't tell it was boosted. After finding the blower, full exhaust system, an upgraded fuel system, and more, I had to have it, and after buying the car, I simply put gas in it and drove it right to the shop. Now, it did break down a few times on me, and it had many issues, but after fixing everything, including the problematic OptiSpark ignition, the fuel system, oil leaks, exhaust leaks, and much more, ProCharger, like the company, drove out in a ProCharged C8 and hand-delivered an upgraded blower that we installed. All in, I had a fully sorted, boosted C4 for only around $6,000. Now, Marlin hasn't seen Ruby in many years and he's since moved on to another supercharged Corvette, a much newer one, but I've been dying to show him everything I've done to the car in the last year and I want it to be perfect when he sees it again and a little bit faster. So let's make it faster. Now this pro-charged LT1 engine is already pretty powerful and I discovered that it has LT4 heads, larger injectors, headers, and most likely a GM hot cam, but it's still running this, the LT1 intake. And I had an awesome subscriber send me this, the proper LT4 intake that should be mated to those heads. So this is good for a bump in horsepower and I think it's gonna help us out with some intake to cylinder head sealing issues that you have when you try to fit that intake to the LT4 heads. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Something else I've been told that you're not supposed to be able to do is run 42 pound injectors with the factory computer, even though that has a burned chip Apparently these are too large for that factory computer to control properly. So my friends at fuelinjectorconnection.com sent out some 30 pounders and this should be more than enough fuel for the five or six PSI of boost that our ProCharger P1SE is producing. Okay, now that you guys know what we're about to do, let's get dirty. All right, LT1 intake removal. Step one, we're gonna remove some fuel lines. And for that, we use a specialty tool that fits into the line and pushes down a little clip. So this slides in like so. You kind of push this towards the tool and then pull out. You'll get a little fuel that comes out depending on when you started your car last. Not too bad. Next, we're gonna remove our intake tubing from the intercooler to the throttle body. A Couple of clamps like so. And then you just, you just manhandle. There we go. It's really not that hard, it's so easy. And we'll go around unplugging stuff, some stuff where the clip is broken, but other things like the injectors that don't have broken clips. You gotta push them in and pull up. There we go. Outside of all the electrical plugs, we have a few hoses like this brake booster hose. Oh man, I was hoping for a little ch from our new brake booster. This is a very nice brake booster that yours truly installed and let me tell you, it boosts the brakes big time. Little connectors like this and our PCV right here. Now we have a couple of coolant hoses that we need to remove. Hopefully we don't lose too much coolant. Okay, we're good there. And we're, yeah, okay, it's, it's chugging, okay. I got an idea, I got an idea. Let's borrow something. We have this plug here that we can remove like so. And we'll transfer it right here. There we go. Tighten her down, and that way we won't lose our precious coolant. There we go. A the hose on this side as well, and we'll cap this guy off. Now, normally I would leave the fuel rail on the intake manifold and just take it off as one assembly, but with this car, if you take the rail off, you gain access to a couple of bolts that you need to remove for this. Yeah, there's a little bit of fuel here, and by a little, I mean kind of a lot, but that's the name of the game. I'm removing a fuel rail because it's full of, of fuel. It's a rail a rail of fuel. Ah. Now we can yank out our 42 pound injectors and these are all good injectors that who knows, maybe we'll use on some other 
80s, 90s project. We just don't need them here. So when I was talking to Procharger about these old kits back in the day when they were used on stock engines, they just recommended you use the factory size fuel injectors, which I think were like maybe 24 pound injectors and they were more than enough for that. So we're upping it to 30 and that will be plenty of injector. What you don't wanna do, especially with an old engine computer that really can't be very fine tuned, uh, is give it too much fuel. It'll just, it'll run worse. So this car runs pretty good, but I think it's gonna run much better with the 30s. Next we have a throttle cable to remove. So if you go wide open throttle and you can kind of just pull the cable right out like that. Now we can unbolt the throttle cable bracket. And be careful, you're right next to the alternator. And what we can do now is remove the throttle cable from the bracket like so. There we go. And we'll still need to take this bracket off because there is an intake bolt right underneath it that's gonna be a pain to get to. And now you can see that bolt right there. And the bolt that I dropped that's sitting in fuel, okay. Good access now to all these intake bolts. And we have these really long studs on the intake and these don't get tightened down very tight. They just hold the harness on. Now we have a bracket going to the AC compressor that we need to remove. So there's a bolt there. And then this one we can get with electric power. And more electric power. All right, here's this bracket. Now this is where we have access to our EGR2 bolts that go to the intake. If you leave that fuel rail on there, these are a pain. But now we have full access. So we can be super speedy about it. Yay. All right, last bolt is off. There we go. It's intake bolt time. Gosh, it's about to break off of my face. All right, you know what? It's gonna be much easier with the throttle body out of the way. Remove yourself. The bolts are all out. Come on now. All right. Throttle body coming off. Give that a nice cleaning. With that gone, we can get to this bolt much easier. Mm -hmm. That should be it. Oh, no, never mind. One last one. This one's a stud. A sneaky, sneaky stud. Now we're good. All right, hang on, hang on. Before I get this intake manifold off, I have to show you something that can help many of you break a bad habit, and that is with today's video sponsor, Fume. It's a flavored air device. Fume makes replacing a bad habit easy and fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. There are no electronics, and instead of vapor, it just uses flavored air. So inside of here, you have a flavored core. It's really easy to remove and replace. Pops in like that, and then this slides over. It's magnetic, and these cores are all natural, flavored with essential oils, and you can adjust your air to flavor ratio just by twisting. So this has no nicotine, no vapor, and you can choose from so many different delicious flavors. This is a good one, but right now I have the orange vanilla. And when I first got this, I was so surprised and how flavorful it is, it's, it's so fresh. If you guys need help quitting a bad habit in a natural way, then click on my link down below or go to tryfume.com slash legit streetcars or you can scan the QR code and use the code legit streetcars. That's gonna get you 10% off your journey pack. Oh, and you can also upgrade your journey pack to the Solano to enjoy the premium walnut barrel and onyx black coated mouthpiece that has a smoother finish and you still get the 10% off. So that's trifume.com slash legit streetcars. Good luck. Now let's get this intake off. All right, now we're just gonna gently lift the intake off the engine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's glued on there. It's gonna take some muscle and some prying. Yeah. All right, there's no good place to pry for this intake. Oh yeah, that's not happening. I feel like a monkey up here. Just kind of crawling around, poking at stuff. Ooh. Intake. I went a little crazy with the RTV last time because this intake's not supposed to fit to these heads. So I wanted to make sure it's sealed and now I, I really glued it on there. I really screwed over the next guy. I'm the next guy. Why did I do this? When in doubt, larger pry bar is what you need. It works 100% of the time. Oh yeah, see that? There we go. Separate yourself glue. Woo, all right. There we go. Old LT1 intake coming off. So old. Oh, kind of heavy too. I'm getting old maybe. Here's the inside of our engine, sort of. And here are our old gaskets and yeah, 
I RTV'd this, not supposed to use this much, but there was just no ceiling material. And I am very curious to see if this thing starts up better and just runs just generally better with this new intake because it's getting a 100% seal. I sprayed brake clean in here and the RPM didn't go up. It didn't seem like there was an intake leak, but there could have been small ones all over the place. Now this mating surface is generally clean for me having this intake off. Well, at this point, just a few hundred miles ago, but we just have to get my goopy RTV out of the way and not have it fall inside of the engine. Don't do that. I'm just gonna use a razor blade, some brake clean and a rag. And after a few minutes, it's gonna look like this. Nice and shiny and clean. And we want our throttle blades to be a little cleaner as well. So we'll let them soak with a little of the intake valve turbo cleaner. Brake clean works well for this too. There we go. We'll give it a few minutes to Think about what it's done. That makes no sense. With the intake manifold side by side, we can see a couple of differences. And right away, it's the port design of the intake. So this is gonna match up with the cylinder head. And you can see they're kind of chamfered in a little bit. And these are straight. And what the issue is with ceiling is you can see here, the ceiling surface right in this area of the intake is much smaller than this right here. So if you try to put this intake on with the LT4 heads that look like this, you can see the ports are meant to match up to the LT4 intake. You could have a ceiling issue where that very, very thin ceiling portion on the intake isn't enough to keep all of the air in. You can actually see here where the line was for the gasket. So it was that close. So we're gonna be fixing all of that with our head LT4 intake and this is good for about 10 or 15 more horsepower and yes they were painted red right from the factory. If you ordered a 1996 only Corvette with the LT4 package that was the one and only year and the last year of the C4 that you could get the LT4. Next up we have to clean our dual blade throttle body. Let's do a light little clean in there. And we'll just go in here gently with our brush. No need to get aggressive with these throttle bodies. It's gonna be just fine. It doesn't have to be shiny in here. And guys, if the dealership tries to sell you a throttle body cleaning for like $200, it's usually a gigantic ripoff. If your car is running good, your throttle body might look a little dirty like this, but it's not affecting anything. So if you wanna feel good, you can clean it yourself too, and you don't have to take it off to do this because you can open up the blades like so and get in most of this with a rag, just don't leave it in. But we'll make this LT1 throttle body look nice and pretty. And look at that, that's an airfoil. That is a performance modification. Kind of a funny old school one that you would add these on and they claimed like eight horsepower. They, it doesn't gain eight horsepower. The idea is the air is just hitting this and velocity and airflow stuff. And I don't think so. All right, guys, it is a couple of days later and we've had some development, some big developments in the world of LT4 intake gaskets. This was quite the debacle. As you can see, I have a bunch of gaskets from all sorts of different brands. And if you have one of these LT4 intakes, definitely just go straight to GM. There is a slight difference. Let me let me show you. If you look here, the one in the back, the black one, has a lot more gasket material. There's a ton of debate online on forums, like from 15, 20 years ago. People are battling it out. LT1 versus LT4 intake gaskets. There's part numbers being thrown around. Everybody gets a little wild and crazy. But just know, this is what you need. Take a screenshot. One, two, three, six, seven, 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 seven. If you're gonna run one of these red LT4 intakes. All right, guys, get this. I just messaged Marlin. Hey, Marlin, I wanted to give you something from Ruby. Are you home today? So like a little, like a hubcap or whatever. And he's like, I'll be around after two. It's his 90 year old mother's birthday. So that is three hours from now. And we have a tight window because it's 16 degrees out in Chicago. It's gonna get dark. So we have three hours to get this LT4 intake on. Uh, so luckily I called in a friend of mine to help with this job. Um, son, can I get that intake manifold gasket from you? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's right oh. there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You got the right side up yeah. though? Right, right. Snack? Oh yeah. Of course, you know. Ah, you see that right side up? Ah. Okay. See that? It's right side up. Hands are... No, you're good, you're good. Jeez. So we can't flip this, otherwise this thing won't seal. Mm. And check this out. See these little plastic clips? Yeah. They fit in these little holes right here. Oh, so easy. And we snap it in and then it holds it in place. So I'm training Sung right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I told him the intricacies of the LT1 and the LT4 intake, so he knows all about it. You yeah. wanna put that one on? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, thanks, I can so. do that. This, this side up. This side oop. Up. Yeah. <laughs> My English not so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, <laughs> yeah, our English is not too good looking <laughs> from Georgia. All right. So, all right, look at that. So simple. You got it going on. Wow. All right, now, the most important part here is going to be this seal here uh -huh. and this seal here. All right, we got Sung in from L.A., right? Uh -huh. yep. And we're filming a TV show together. Yes, so he kind of swooped in in the middle of my Corvette video here to help. Uh, the Ride Life? The Ride Life, yeah. yeah. It'll be out uh, at some point. I don't know when. But we're in the middle of filming that episode and my YouTube video at the same time. It's crazy. In Chicago. In Chicago yeah. in December. A little cold. Oh. Yeah, but we're going to get it done and then drive this thing 30 miles to the south side. Yes, sir. T together. South side. All right, let's get that intake. You want to grab it? Hold sure. on. You need gloves. Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, you're going to be eating yeah. popcorn and stuff. So I love the I will color. Get... Isn't it nice? That's yeah. how it matches your shirt. Yeah. And this was just given to you by a, a viewer? A yeah, fan? an awesome wow. viewer. Subscriber out there who gave me this LT4 intake, you know who you are, thank you. You probably didn't think Sung from the Fast and Furious movies would be installing it, but here we are, things happen. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some glue out first. So here, hang on, hang tight there. You could rest it on the wheel there yeah, if you want. Yeah, keep it over yeah. that so we don't <clears throat> contaminate it. All right, so what we need to do here is essentially build a wall. And of course my RTV is not working. Give it the old stab -a -roo and clear out this old nasty RTV. We got some blockage here, guys. That happens to me if I don't even eat enough fiber. Yeah, me too. Metamucil? Meta, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The orange stuff, it's yeah. delicious. For all you young people, you don't know what that is. It's fiber for old people when you age. You, you don't have the stoppage. How old are you? 51. Really? You look good. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's uh, Asian genes. Until one day we just turn into Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> we look good for a while and all of a sudden you just kind of hunch it. over. Yeah. And like wax on, wax off. How old are you? I'm 39. Ah, oh, baby. Yeah. You know so much for a baby. Yeah, well. Started young. Oh. You know? I mean, I wish oh. I had the knowledge that you had. Like, you can look at this and you can... Well, the best thing is, Sung, is that now that you work here as my mechanic, yeah. I will teach you the ways. Oh, I'm hired. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we're on a working interview right now. Oh, uh, I don't well, know yet. I mean, I got to see how this intake goes. If it starts leaking or something, I don't know. Well, sir, you're the most handsome boss I've ever uh, <laughs> potentially worked for. Thank you, thank you. All right, so check it out. We have to build a wall right here okay. with our TV. And it doesn't have to be too thick. It's just got to be as thick as this black gasket. Okay. So now that I've cleared out the colon of my RTV tube, we can do that. So we're gonna lay this bead. If we didn't do this or did it like improperly, it would leak engine oil. Cause this whole valley is like full of oil. You wanna do this one? Uh, it's really fun. Sure. You wanna hold yeah. that light for mm -hmm. me? Okay. So you're gonna go from gasket to gasket, just like, yeah. Just kinda here. You know what's up. Yeah. That's a nice. So you can be kinda nice generous bead. with it, huh? Yeah. I would say more is, is more okay is in this. Yeah, and then you want to bring it all the way to that gasket so it touches and kind of forms a little seal there. Right there. A little one there. Oh, man, dude. Oh, that, yeah, that's, a, that's okay. That, yeah. it's like, that's good. That's it's good. like a trail of poop. Yeah. Okay. It looks poopy. <laughs> <laughs> poop is good in this scenario. All right. Uh, we are good. We've built our two walls. We have the correct LT4 gasket. Now it is intake time. This is where an assistant helps so we don't mess up all of our poop. Okay. You're gonna pick that up and flip it upside down so the shiny side is down. Yeah. And then flip it this way, those two big nostril things in the front. So what we wanna do is slide this like under, but we need to have, oh, there you go. We wanna have it like hovering before we actually go down so we know we're like fully lined up. This is where like having another guy is really nice. Okay, so once we're clear, we just plop it down. Okay. Bam, it's on. That's it? On. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, now we just got a bunch of bolts and the fuel injectors. But yeah, this kind of stuff is easy. Like, man, I rebuilt a V12, a twin turbo V12 Mercedes engine at my house garage. Mm. It was a $1 O-ring that failed and caused an oil leak. It required me to do 50 hours of engine disassembly work to replace the $1 seal. Did 50 hours of work, put the seal in, and then put it all back together. Wow. And it's like, that's, that's crazy. All right, we got to get some bolts before this glue sets in too much. Okay. I'll give you some for that side and I'll take some for this side. We're just going to be putting the bolts in these holes. Okay. And then you're going to want to turn it and we'll start them by hand. And you'll see how this thing will like kind of locate a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we'll be good. Now, some of these have studs and uh, you got to kind of remember where they go, but I think I remember. All right, we got we to gotta tighten these bad boys up. You want to zip a couple down? Is there a certain torque that you... Yeah, we're going to... Uh, so right first. Yeah, so right now this is on the lowest setting, so it's not really going to do much. Okay. It's just going to kind of zip it down. Then we're definitely going to be torquing it. Okay. So yeah, if you just want to kind of go around and snug those up. Sure. That'd be great. And then I'll get the torque wrench set up. So first we're going to do 71 inch pounds. You know, this is all fun, but I keep looking at the DeLorean. You know, it's a dream of mine to drive that car one day before... I leave this earth. I don't know if you know that, Alex. It's too bad, son. It's too oh. bad. 
I don't we think I have we, long we, to we, live, though. So this is like your make-a-wish right now? It is. It is. It is, Mr. Adams. I always, I always built my DeLorean to fulfill someone's make-a-wish. <laughs> All right, how about after Polish food, we go for a DeLorean ride? Theo, All yes. Right. That's what I'm talking about. You really don't need to convince me to drive a DeLorean. Huh? <laughs> okay, so we're going to start here. That's number one. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll kind of show you the... All right. Two clicks, that's it? We just, okay. Yeah, once you hear that click, and you're then, good. So here, I'll do two. number two, number two's on my side. Okay. And then we'll pass, we'll pass it back and forth. And then, okay, so you're gonna be number four. Mm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's a great sound. Five is that one. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, then I think we're going back over here. That's a great sound. Isn't so, it yeah. satisfying? It's like cracking your knuckles. <laughs> yeah, right? So what's, what's your favorite car that you own? Uh, I just completed a Corolla GTS AE86. Oh, cool. 1986, actually. Nice. The initial D car. Oh, that's sweet. I told you my first Japanese car is this Eclipse. Right behind me, yeah. But, uh... Pretty easy. Yeah, you could pretty much fix the whole car with a 10 millimeter. Do you have that one parked next to one of the two Grand Nationals? You guys know that he's got two Grand Nationals? Two. I thought he only had one. Yeah. One is like a complete factory, like... Uh, restoration and then one it was a roller we found in the desert that and and Nissan sent me a R34 that they have to crush so we're gonna do a like hybrid so if it's a Grand National and a, and a GTR had a baby no so this way. car would come out it's called the Kudo which means like half Japanese half black Oh. Yeah, the King Kudo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. So wait, do you name all your cars? Yeah, yeah. Every I can start one. doing that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not that creative. This is like well, what, are the, what are the Grand Nationals called? Uh, Buddy, the, I mean the other one. Yeah, so Buddy is the factory one. King Kudo is the... the, the, where, the where does factory. Buddy come from? What does that mean? Because it's just... I don't know. It's like, it's like you know, G-Buddy. Like, it's... feels like he's just the old Buddy. It's your friend? Yeah. It's like always there for you. I gotta name my Grand National. Yeah. I just call it the GN. I'm like, you gotta give him more. I gotta name. come up with it's like something. naming your kids like boy and girl. You're right. You gotta, you know, something like. God, I got nothing. Guys, name for the Grand National. For that matter, name for all my cars. I don't know. Yeah. I'll pick them. I'll seriously name them whatever you guys say because yeah. I got nothing. Got to name. Got to name. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you daily? Uh, one of the greatest cars ever made in history. What's that? A 2023 Toyota Sienna. Oh, minivan. Yes. Oh, you know what? One of the one of the guys told me you were into vans. Well, it's not, vans, not vans, just Sienna. What about 15 passenger Chevy Express vans? How do you feel about those? No, I don't care about that. Because the Sienna has 18 cup holders. I don't know if you uh, the audience knows this, but this is I think whoever whoever designed the Sienna should get a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. I, I, mean, I truly believe. With it. that many cup holders, you are keeping the piece in there. 36 miles a gallon, my friend. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like, I'll show you my 15 passenger Chevy Express van and it hopefully will change. What's the gas mileage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It gets some. Yeah. Yeah. It takes, it eats gas. It, yes, it likes it. But do you have kids too? No, I have no kids. I have dogs, so Wait, the dogs on. love so it. You're into this minivan with 87 cup holders with no kids. 18. And, and that's something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is love, man. I right love there. this car. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> All right, hold on. So now we did the first pass. Now we need to go over the exact same sequence, but at a higher torque rating. Okay. So that was 71 inch pounds. Now we're going to be doing 35 foot pounds. Okay, there we go. Can we take the DeLorean out for a drive? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to torque this down first. Okay. Yeah. We Great still have idea. a little bit of work here to do, but yeah. not a lot. So we can go for a DeLorean ride. Let's do it. Dreams come true. <laughs> All right, guys, this is kind of crazy, but they are setting up loads and loads of gear, and some of it's making it into the DeLorean. There's like 12,000 people here. Um, so while they do that for the next 30 minutes, I got to finish this Corvette engine so we can go meet up with Marlin. So how many of you guys expected this to happen in the middle of this random C4 video? I, I didn't. Oh man, I'm getting really excited now. I can't wait to give Marlin a ride in this awesome GM 90s Corvette interior. Actually, no, he's gonna be driving. This is gonna be so much fun. And I did ask him last year if he'd be interested in getting the C4 back. And uh, he said, no, he has a newer procharged C6 and nowhere to store this or the desire to work on an older one, but that's okay. We'll still reunite him with 
Ruby. I'm gonna finish up pretty much everything here. Sung is doing makeup and getting ready for the next scene. This is like, it's a TV production. It's kind of crazy. Nothing I've ever been involved in, but I gotta put everything back together because we actually do need to drive this over to Marlin. So let's get our throttle body back on. Oh, and I cleaned it, I cleaned it. Look at that. Look at how nice that is. And in here, it's gonna flow all the air ever. New gasket. And we'll start these bolts by hand. There we go. All right, this does not require much torque at all. That's good. Don't go too crazy or you will snap these little bolts. And if you snap the bolts, then you won't be able to go for a ride with Sun to go surprise the guy that owned this car for 20 years. Don't do that. There we go. Before we get the injectors and the rail on, we need to get this gasket in here and we'll connect up our EGR. Since we're going to the LT4, this has studs back here instead of those bolts. A totally not important little detail that makes really no difference, but now you know. Or you know. Actually, it does kind of make it easier to work on. It's kind of nice. Click and click, click it up a notch, click. All right, you guys know what time it is. It's Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease time because you cannot work on a car without an old bucket of Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. And in this case, we're gonna use them to replace these 42 pound injectors, which apparently are too much for the stock computer, with these 30 pound injectors from my friends at Fuel Injection Connection. I'll drop a link down below, but I get all my fuel injectors from them and they work really well. And they give you a little data card or data card. You guys say data or data. I always say, what did I just say? I don't even know what I say anymore. I think I say data because I'm a big Star Trek fan. Data was the Android, he's phenomenal. But anyway, they give you a little card with all the data, data, and uh, it'll tell you all about the injectors if you need it for tuning. But anyway, what we need to know is that these injectors need sunroof grease and then they need to be popped in like so. And this is kind of crazy. I don't know if I've ever seen this. It's dual O-ringed on the bottom. See, the, the other ones don't have that. I've never seen that. I guess two O-rings is better than one O-ring, right? Okay. Sung was asking me how Mercedes-Benz kind of fits into working on these cars. This is how, Sung. This is 12 or 13 year old Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. And it's kind of a tradition here at Legit Street Cars that I use this like all the time. Sunroof grease. Sunroof grease. So it lubricates the track of the sunroof, but it works oh. really good for things like fuel injector O-rings. So see these rubber O-rings? Yeah. They're shiny. I put a little grease on there and it'll make them like slide on better. Oh. So, this is an eight cylinder, so it's got eight fuel injectors. So if you could do me a favor, we need to guide them into those holes. Okay. Yeah, so once you get it in there, kind of popped in. Yep. Once, the, are they all in there pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So now we can get four bolts in right here. So I'll give, you want to take those two? Mm -hmm. And they are going to go. <gasps> Ooh, oh, look save. at that. Ooh, oh, see that? So that's you skill, one that's at a skill time. right there. And I'll crisscross over to you. Good, and we're gonna human torque these. Okay. So it's not that important, we just do one of these and we make the click. Click. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, you psycho? <laughs> click. That's what I did. Because this isn't that important. We're good, we did it. We got the uh, intake on, the fuel injectors are on, couple little button up things like, oh, this is satisfying, you wanna do one of these? Sure. All you do is bam. Oh, it has yeah. the click. Oh yeah, it's got a nice click. Click. Yeah, so we're almost there. We just got to plug in a few little things like that. If you want to do that side. And then we are almost ready on this one, but we got to go for that ride. Yeah. Anyway, the rest are just little little details. Let's go for a DeLorean ride. Yeah. We'll plug all that stuff in, yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Good job, man. Awesome, thank you. Well, I didn't do much. <laughs> just kind of yeah, held stuff. Getting that out, intake on and not messing up the, the goo no, was... I didn't break anything yeah. yet. Yet. <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> All right. Think you can get the start done? I think so. All right, let's do it. We already filmed the one for the show, so. All right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, baby. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> He's got it. He's got the DeLorean throttle. You yes. got to give it some gas. It's very cold. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds good. Listen to that manifold leak <laughs> that it developed. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it needs some fine tuning, people, okay? They, All right. Okay, take, take two. two. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, we go. Yes, yeah, and you we're got off. It. You gotta like, you gotta two foot it. Yep. Just a little. Gotta baby it a little bit. Woohoo! It handles great. It really does. Yeah. Even like from the factory, they say these things handle pretty well, but then I did the coilovers. Mm. I did the bigger brakes in the front. We lowered it. Mm -hmm. 
all new bushings and tie rods and all that good stuff. And That's uh, why it looks so good. Yeah. The stance is great on it. What's up? <laughs> this thing gets so much attention too. Like I, you're driving this thing around and everybody just a DeLorean. You're getting gas. But people love it. Yeah. It's a car for the people. It's sexy too. I mean, it's I timeless. Know. It's a yeah. truly timeless design. It still looks like a future car, like 40 years later, mm, you know? Yeah. We're doing rollers for the TV show mm. right now. How's the temperature on this bad boy? We good? Uh, yeah. It's a, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, That's good. It's, it's so cold outside. Oil cold. temp's good. A little backfire action. We got good voltage. The DeLorean, it's a reliable daily driver. What's Lambda? Oh, Lambda's like the air fuel ratio. Oh. So the O2 sensor reads Lambda. Oh. Most people think of it as AFR, oh. air fuel ratio. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, this car's got a Lambda meter that runs, it's where your feet is. Oh, and it basically, it. it's an old school cable driven box mm -hmm. and it counts miles and at 30,000 miles, it'll light up the Lambda light telling you, you need to replace your oxygen sensor. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, I thought we were gonna, we were gonna break down. No. We did good. Yeah. Not gonna, good girl. Knocking on something here. Yeah. All right, so we I made it. Know. We're going to go finish up the C4 mm -hmm. and then go visit Marlin. Marlin, here we come. We're coming, Marlin. You have no idea. He thinks I'm dropping something off. He knows we're coming. At least you don't have hey. to shut the car off. He just, <laughs> just dies. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> auto, auto shut off. That's right. It's a futuristic <laughs> DeLorean technology. <laughs> Everything on the Corvette is wrapped up, except I forgot to run this underneath the throttle body. And because we're filming this TV show, I don't have time to fix it because we got to go to see Marlin before it gets dark. It takes him like a half hour to set up each car. There are like eight microphones hidden all over the place. Some of them not hidden at all. Look at that one here, one here. There's like a bunch over there. It's crazy. Let's Let's see how this thing fires up. We'll prime the pump a little bit. Oh, nice. That's fantastic. All right. Wow. That was a great, like, first start. Woo! Dude, these 30s, man, they are rock solid. The 30 pound injectors, and now that we know for sure the intake is sealed up. This is awesome. All right, I'm gonna check over a few things and we gotta go. Close. Trans fluid was good, I checked the oil. All right, maiden voyage, kind of? It's about an hour later and they're done setting up a minivan with like a gimbal and stuff like that. So uh, I might be at a weird angle because like I literally am competing with all of these cameras and stuff. So when we go for a ride, it might be from like right there. Everything was like big, you know, big. Like this is like, you want a sunroof? It comes off too. Wow. Actually, I just got this. Everybody in my videos was always like, Alex, you're missing the target top because I bought it at the auction without, it was missing. Oh, it was. And I finally found one. They're oh. just really expensive. So I was waiting on that right, that good deal. Oh, they were, they are expensive? They're like a thousand dollars used. Wow. And I'm like, I don't want to pay a thousand dollars. So I found one for 500. It just took a year. It's worth <laughs> but the I way. keep the car in the, I keep it in the garage. So I don't care. Yeah. Not bad, right? That's American muscle, baby. That's right. And still all fiberglass car, huh? Yeah. That's since, cool. since day one. Wow. Woo -hoo -hoo. Whoa! <laughs> that smells good. It doesn't smell like old mildew car. Yeah, Marlin kept it clean. Good. Yeah. You should have seen it at the auction. It was nasty. I mean, I had to do a lot of detailing. I mean, what a great price. 3000 bucks, man, and you're driving this cool of a car? I know. You can't beat that. Yeah. So I got a job. I got this small movie role in New York, in Staten Island. And got paid nothing. It was like for free. And so I worked in the city at a restaurant, like in the evenings after we would shoot, so I could just eat and survive, right? Yeah. And that movie never got made. Like the director disappeared, and you know, we never heard from anybody that was part of the film. Oh my gosh. But the producer of that film knew the future director of, of Tokyo Drift. And so that director was finishing film school and he was gonna direct his first you know, feature film, a little independent movie called Better Luck Tomorrow. And that movie was shot for like $90,000. And he goes, hey, 
the director was looking for actors, right? And it's like, hey man, you guys should like link up. We finished this movie. And it's actually a funny thing that we're in Chicago is that Chicago was really one of the reasons why I have a career because Roger Ebert saw the movie at Sundance Film Festival and championed the film. No. He goes, everybody needs to watch this movie. So the movie got sold to MTV Films and Paramount and did, you know, did fairly okay. Didn't, it wasn't like some runaway hit, yeah. but did okay. And that's where Han was born. Han is in high school in this movie called Better Luck Tomorrow. Wait, wait, seriously? Yeah, yeah. And I drive a, like a 66 Mustang. And, and right. they use the name Han in that movie? Yeah, it's like literally Han. No way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Han. Dude, right. I didn't know yeah. that. And so he's in high school and, you know, they're, you know, and he's like smoking all these cigarettes and stuff. And that connects <laughs> to why Han actually eats snacks. And in Fast Five, we talk about that. Like, Giselle's like, you know, used to be a heavy smoker. Now you snack all the time. Right? Dude, I had no idea. Yeah. So that movie... You know, Han was born in that, and then eventually the director went and got you know a job offer for got the opportunity to direct Tokyo Drift, which is, was supposed to be like a straight to video movie, right? And there was this little role, like a little little role. I was cast in this little role that became Han. So, you know, so the original name of the character was like Phoenix or something. Yeah. And they were gonna hire like a rapper like a hip-hop artist to like play this one little role where throws the keys to the main character in the tuner bail scene. Pick mine. Why? I want to see what the kids got. And they already had hired Bow Wow, rapper. Yeah. So they're like, it's Twinkie, and they're like, they're having too many rappers. Like, man, you know, we got to find somebody who kind of has swagger. And because I worked with the director, you know, he was like, well, how about we put an Asian-American guy in that? Not Japanese, because Han's not Japanese. Han is like a Korean yeah. actual name. Like a, you know, an Asian-American like expat that's there. Like, why not? And so, you know, Han wasn't really in the script. It had to be rewritten and re-adjusted like, so it would fit into the film, or he would fit into the film. And the reason I snack is originally the idea was that Han smoked. And I was like, you know, a lot of kids are going to watch Fast and Furious. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. And I don't actually talk in the film much. So the snacking was like a way for me to have an activity. Right, something to right. Do, right. And that became kind of like Han's thing, like, right? So was Tokyo Drift originally not gonna even be a Fast and the Furious movie? It was gonna be its own Straight stand- to video. It was gonna be its own standalone Well, it was called video? Fast and Furious. But it was gonna go straight to video, not in the theaters. Why? Because the first two were were successful. Like yeah, because I think they were like, yeah, this isn't really going anywhere. And, really? Because right? Fast and Furious One was considered like a B movie. Man, like it's a, so crazy right? to think. I can't imagine that right now. Now, you know what I mean? Like I went to the movie theater to see it. Yeah. And I thought it was like a big, big movie at the time. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. No, no, it was like a small little budget. And you know, Paul read this article about um, you know street racing in LA, and so it was really Paul, right, that set up Fast and Furious One. Yeah. And he loved cars and stuff, and um, so that got set up. And then you know, Dom needed to come back, but you know, Vin didn't come back for two, and so they were like, you know, this movie's not going to go anywhere. And then Tokyo Drift, none of the original characters were there, but then. Vin did a cameo for us, and then that sparked that, hey, this movie could actually, or this franchise can continue if the original characters from one came back. And so then four was made, and then that made enough money where, and it, it actually showed that, hey, there's actually an audience for this, right? Right, right. And so then five showed, made five, and then it made a whole bunch of money. Yeah. Right? And like, so that's where it took off. Yeah. And then, you know, Dwayne Johnson was part of five. Yeah, yeah. And then after seven, after Paul passed away, it be, that's when everything actually changed. Like, it all changed because even I didn't really put too much, give the franchise too much credit. You know, like, people talked about, you know, Tokyo Drift, but most of the time they're like, yeah, whatever. It's this movie about drifting. It's not even a fast movie. 
But then after Paul passed away, I realized how important the franchise is to people. And I think once he passed away, people actually missed him. Yeah. And the whole energy changed around the franchise. And then that's when I really felt like wherever I go in the world, people treat me like they grew up with me. You know, and when you, we all connect now because we lost somebody together. Yeah. And that's, it's a weird thing. I mean, the car community with Paul Walker is, I mean, they are so supportive. There are car meets, you know, just for him. To celebrate him all the time, like everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like the the love that everybody has for him and like all the other characters and stuff. Because the camera doesn't lie, Paul was a wonderful human being, you know? He was so sweet. So what's right. the plan? The plan is Marlon's house is two houses over. Okay. I'm going to go knock on the door and he knows that we can't park over there. So I'm going to walk him around and be like, I got something to show you around the corner. Okay. We'll have Ruby with our headlight that just decided to break on us. We'll fix that. Should we leave it on? We should we leave it on just for... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Fix. We'll do it on the... Oh, there we go. That's good. Yeah. We're good. Right. Uh, and then I'll bring Marlon over. Oh. Mar- Marlon? He's popping out from over. Marlon's here. <laughs> so we don't even have to go to Marlon. Marlon, what's up? I'm like, I'm setting up a surprise for you, man. <laughs> good to see you, Good to see you, man. Good good to see you too. Too, too. How you been? I'm pretty good. I'm hanging in there. I got, I got some friends with me. I see, I yes, see. just just a few. Yeah, that guys. That's my buddy Max. He's my editor. I've seen, I watch the show. Oh, <laughs> you watch? Of so you say, okay, good. You know, some people don't watch even when their old cars are on. Hey, you know, but... <laughs> Uh, ever since uh, Brian told me about yeah. it, I've been watching ever since. So. You look good, man. You, a you, man, I can't believe you're retired already. Like, that's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Hey, I worked for 33 years. No, I know. I know you paid, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend, Sung. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Marlon, Hello. Sung. Hello. Sung helped me a little with this today, putting the intake manifold back on and a few things because I wanted to show it to you and give you a ride in it. And I know I told you I just had a little piece, you know, to give mm-hmm. you. So I got a little memorabilia off the car. But I have been dying to come show you the car and reunite you with Ruby. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Once it's again. Emotional. Man, you don't, know how many, you don't know how many months I spent in that garage. Because you know, as we were working, yeah. anytime it snowed or bad weather, I got called into work. Right. So I'm working on this at 2, 3 in the morning. No parts. So I'm using whatever <laughs> I got in the garage you know, to try to fix it. You know, I'm just kind of messing around with it back Yeah. Like, so, you know, at that time, we got called in at any bit of snow. Or and there were some, cold. yeah, I remember the snow program. So every time they called, I had to end up going in. So it was okay then. But no, when I saw the snow this time, I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't have to go in. Now you get to stay in, yeah. Look at this, man. But, yeah, man, it's, uh, we've transformed it over the last year. Oh, back to kind of like how you had it, you know, because I remember the pictures you sent me and, uh, I wanted to kind of like pay homage to the amount of work that you put into this. Oh, you guys did all the work, man. <laughs> I mean, I saw. <laughs> I was like, man. It was fun was to get like, those tips. To my world. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, working on this crammed LT1 engine can be yeah. a big pain in the butt, but some of the tips and tricks you gave me, like on the spark plugs, you got to reach around and do one of these. And <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to see the engine? Oh, yeah. All right. So we just finished some stuff. Oh, here, hang on. It's goofy. It's goofy. Hold on. Let me. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get in there. Well, Marlon would know. Marlon would know. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, that's sweet. You got so, the intake. I got the intake. Sweet. You got the top. I got the top. Everybody would always give me crap that I don't have the top. And then, uh, sweet, yeah, so man. today Sung and I did the intake and the fuel injectors. LT4. LT4 to match the LT4 heads that I already had. Remember, I discovered it had the heads. Right, right. And uh, it runs, man. Like, it runs good. Yeah. I saw on the uh, episodes. The last one, yeah. Yeah. It's the tires a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. It moves. And then we got the new Pro Charger. Sweet. Yeah, man. So it is, like, tip top. I got a little bit of fine tuning to do. But other than that, she's solid. This is sweet, man. (laughs) This brings back the old memories. Well, you took care of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was a car guy. Yeah. I got another one. You got a C6, right? Yeah. What's it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Cool. Look at the C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protect Ruby. Dude. Wow. (laughs) 
Get out of here. Yeah, it ain't dirty. Don't say nothing. It's cold. Right? Whatever. Cold. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's dirty. This is my favorite C6 color for sure. Wow. Yeah, I'll fire it up for you. Oh, man. Hey, you got matching shoes. You got matching Jordans for your car. <laughs> Oh, you got the Avalon King. <laughs> yeah, and you ceramic coated it? Good for you. <laughs> Woo! Wow. Marlon, that's mint. It's got the same supercharger. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's a Vortec. That's a Vortec. Wow, man, this is beautiful. This thing probably moves, man. Oh, yeah, it's pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. It's a great garage. Yeah. Everything when the wife kicks me out. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I had to put some sounds in. Oh, let's see. Whoa, oh, are you P3s. kidding me? Yeah, wow. everything out the seats, out the back, everything. Man, but you know, this is why I love the Corvette. You can have that and then a ton of room still. And you know, it's like a usable car. The sounds that's what the, the, the OGs called them called that the sounds that sounds good too so though I need to go back and see that again you want to go for a ride yes yes sir all right all right. Thank you for a ride. all right that's all you marlin you drive it all right we're going for a ride with ruby and marlin reunited again oh my goodness yeah man everything is super clean yeah it's detailed up still beautiful. sounds the same right sounds better <laughs> So you had this car for what, like 20 years, right? Yeah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> it lights them up. I mean, it is like 20 degrees outside, but see, look at that. Marlin's got ASR off. Uh, uh, gauges. Yeah, everything digital is, dash. Everything is sweet, everything is working. Um, so Sung was wondering, what was this for? Uh, it's like a key hook? So if you, whoa, <laughs> you know how to do it. I trust you. <laughs> I'm a little scared, but <laughs> only because of the temperature, but you're good. Yeah. It's super boost weather right now. Oh yeah. Running you know? good, but the tires say, no, no, no. No. It's yeah. too cold. <laughs> like, do you just fit in it? Like exactly. Like, yeah, kind of like your body just, remembers, right? It's like, perfect. yeah. The steering, the steering is tighter. Got the nice rumble to it. Oh yeah. Uh, everything is just good for for college old. Yeah. This thing is old now, man. This is. I know. What is this? This is 30 years old. Yeah. 1993. Yeah, we're into that, right? Yeah. Woo. And it just tip top, man. It runs good. I see. And it even rides good. Still, uh -huh. well, I mean, the shocks are good. Yeah, I think you did the shocks. Yeah, I think. I think. The bill, yeah, it's got the bill scenes on there. Yeah. Oh, this is great, man. I know, like, with my Trans Am, I don't drive it that much, and I'm in between all these other cars when I'm filming and everything, but, like, when I get in there, it's like the muscle memory. It's just, it's there. I yeah. fit in there. I sink in there. I know where my hands are supposed to be, and you're, like, all set up, man. Yeah. Like, I wanted to do this kind of reuniting video, like, in the summer, but... I was waiting on some parts and some other projects came up and like I'm, I'm sure you probably saw the DeLorean if you've been watching the show and so I gotta show you that car one day but uh I got a little busy but I figured better late than never on this you know did everybody leave oh no they're right there I'm like hey all left us there you go I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, of course. This, this of is, course. This is the highlight of the year. Well thank you Marlon for you. keeping this car so nice for 20 plus years I'm so glad I discovered it yeah. It's crazy how our paths have crossed. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I hope they, they cross again, you know. Yeah, it's man, for sure. I got to come show you some of the other cars, and I want to ride in that supercharged Corvette. Oh, man, that thing is nasty. Yeah. Man. I can't even get in it without doing <laughs> But I, I know when it's about to go sideways. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get out of it. You know. He knows. All right, guys. We are wrapping up. It's like, what, 10 degrees now? It's, cool. getting, it's getting kind of late. So thank you, Marlon. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <I appreciate laughs> <it>. <laughs> It was good seeing you, and hopefully we'll get you in another video. I want to give you a ride in some of the other cars. So. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anyway, Marlon, ladies and gentlemen. Marlin. Thank you. <laughs> Jet Street <on>. Guard. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is Marlon, the C4 Corvette. Sung, thank you so much for all of the help in this video. Very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Beautiful day. Beautiful experience. Man, 
and it's Lou Malnati's pizza time. Yes, it is. That's right. So right. it is cold. We're ready to go. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. See you later. Now, Marlon hasn't seen old Ruby in many years, and he's since moved on to another supercharged lap. I like to walk over here, reset the hood, do my intro. Ugh. Now Marlon hasn't. Now Marlon hasn't. Audio check. Oh yeah, it's an Android. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. You gotta ask him. He's the master tech. Uh, Alex, what are you doing? Oh, I totally forgot to get a thumbnail with Sung and the red intake. So I'm painting the original intake red for the thumbnail. It's TV movie magic, people. There you go. There's our thumbnail intake, if you guys were wondering why it looks bad. This is really bad. You, you watching? I love this. Bloopers, bloopers, bloopers. Imagine being the technician and work. Imagine being the... Could you guys in the South... Could you guys in the South... Could you guys in the South... <laughs> and on these old... Okay, I totally forgot. The very top is natural color. So we'll do one of these. Be honest, people, did you notice in the thumbnail that this wasn't the real LT4 intake? You didn't, you didn't. Whoa, whoa, the real thing. That's not what they say in that song. All right, anyway, thanks for watching.